I'm Jay Fidel. This is Asia in Review, done by Think Tech Hawaii, right here in the Davies Pacific Center at Think Tech Studios. With me today is Dong Mei Yang. She's a lawyer practicing in Beijing, and she is part of the Hawaii China Legal Exchange Program. Yeah. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Uh, me too. It's my pleasure. So tell me, Dung Mei, mm -hmm. what, what is the program doing for you? What is your involvement in the exchange program now? Mm -hmm. um, how is it playing out for you? It's going well so far. Uh, I have practiced law in, China, uh, in Beijing about four years, and uh, I applied for the uh, Leo Leo program, international law uh, program in Chicago Kent Law School. And when I'm graduate, I'm here take part in this program. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you you have a degree from Chicago Kent Law School? Ah, uh, yeah, international oh. and comparative law. That's wonderful. Huh. So, uh, when did you complete that degree? Uh, this May. Ah. It's a one-year program. Ah. Uh -huh. So, did your firm from uh, Beijing send you, or is that is this on your own nickel? Uh, it's my own nickel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, of course, my boss agreed with me uh -huh. and study in America. Ah, uh -huh. good, good. But it's, it's popular for the Chinese to come to study in America. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular now. Uh, each year, our law firm will send about three or five young attorneys to study abroad. Yeah, I'm so glad that, yeah. that you're here. Uh -huh. So, so w why? Why mm. does your law firm want to send you here to the U.S.? We help more and more clients from America. We want to provide uh, legal services better to them, uh, communicate with them, mm -hmm. and uh, understanding better about Western culture. Uh, Good. Well, I think it's mm -hmm. the right thing to do. And we should do the same for you, and we should send lawyers from Hawaii. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> okay, maybe someday I'll go. Oh, good. I'll see you in Welcome. Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can say hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ni hao ma. Oh, <laughs> So you're yeah. now you're embedded with Cade Shuddy Fleming and right here on Bishop Street yeah. as part of the exchange program. Can yeah. you tell us uh, mm -hmm. what that's like and what kind of legal work you're doing there? Oh, okay. Um, I'm in tax department. Uh, my instructor is Roger Epstein, is a senior partner in tax. Roger uh, Epstein. Yeah, yeah, and tax attorney. Um, I work with Constant Liu, attorney in Case Shetty, uh, depart, uh Tax Department. We work together on a paper about tax arrangement between uh, U.S. and China. If Hawaii people want to invest in China or China people want to invest in Hawaii, uh, we give, uh, give some advice to them about the tax arrangement. This is this is not simple. This is very complex, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Roger was uh, uh, met with us uh, about uh, several times to um, tell us something about tax arrangement. It's very complicated. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I remember your your predecessor, mm -hmm. uh, Zhang Yuzhang, ah. from the Pioneer Law Group in Shanghai. Yeah. Uh, under Richard Xu there and David Mao. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they, uh, she, she was also in Cage Shuddy just mm -hmm. a year ago, mm -hmm. and she was doing similar research. So you're ah. the second lawyer in the program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, now when David Mao was here oh. uh, only a month ago, he spoke about the Hoku Scientific deal, where uh -huh. a company uh, in Beijing uh -huh. uh, made an investment, a substantial investment in a Hawaii company. Yeah, it's a big deal. Big deal. Yeah. So is this the kind of thing that you're studying? Is this the kind of thing that you do in your law firm in Beijing? Yeah, I think so. Our law firm has about uh, five departments and uh, 14 practice areas, including some uh, in investment in America. And uh, I'm in financial and banking uh, department. Most of our clients are financial, financial institution and Bank, so um, of some of client a corporation is they are looking for opportunity to invest in America. Mm -hmm. In two thousand seven, China has China China government gave a go pow, go out policy, encourage state owned company and some private company invest abroad. So 
lots of companies want to invest. Yeah, this uh -huh. is good for us too. Yeah. So have you done a deal from the China side to the Hawaii side? Have you seen a deal out of your firm where a China investment was made into a Hawaii company? I think that there will be more and more investment in Hawaii. So what does what the, the, the Chinese investor think of Hawaii? Is Hawaii mm -hmm. a serious place for investment? Is it a serious business community uh -huh. as far as the Chinese investor is concerned? Um, it's okay. You can tell me exactly how you feel. <laughs> um, I think lots of uh, individuals want to buy real estate in Hawaii. Ah, yeah, right, it's right. a good place for vacation and uh, the real estate price is okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, the environment, uh, investment environment is very nice to foreigners. Um, uh, there is some policy, tax policy, very nice to foreigners. Ah, ah. Mm -hmm. So is it happening? Are, mm -hmm. there, are there Chinese investors investing in land in Hawaii now? Mm, I think so. Ah, mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. What, about, what about U.S. investors uh, who would like to invest in China, uh, such as uh, Chinese people, you know, who came mm -hmm. here years ago mm -hmm. and who like to do the return, you know, go back to China uh -huh. and have a place, an apartment or a house. Uh -huh. uh, is that happening? Are you, is your firm handling uh, cases for American investors buying land in China? Uh, actually, they cannot buy land ah, directly. It's, ah, ah. Uh, it's some restriction, uh, Chinese ah, law. Ah. Um, but they can set up an uh, entity such as a uh, wholly foreign owned entity and a joint venture and uh, set up their business, doing business in China. Wufi. Oh, Wufi. Wufi. <laughs> wholly owned foreign entity. Yeah. W O F E. Yeah, yeah Wufi. <laughs> So mm -hmm. what's the preferred way? I mean, if, if you were advising a client now mm -hmm. whether he should pick a woofie or a joint venture, which uh, way would you tell him to go? It depends. Um, if the foreigner want to control the company, uh, it's a small size company, we will recommend them use woofie. And uh, if they want to use some relationship, uh, uh, Chinese go uh, partner have we will suggest them use some joint venture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds like what an American lawyer would do. Yeah. He would talk about options and then he would see what fits best. Yeah. Yeah. And some consideration about the uh, offshore structure of the U.S. company. Sometimes they want to uh, cons consult the parent company. Uh, U.S. company from liability from uh, arising from uh, Chinese entities. Well, uh, things th you've seen a lot of changes in China law, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. How how long have you been practicing? Uh, four years. Four years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the regulations have changed. The investment regulations. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Change very. Uh, we we can feel the transformation, the legal system, and all the and all the environment transformation. China. Yes, it must mm -hmm. be very exciting for you. Yeah, exciting. Yeah. So there's more lawyers in China now than there were, say, 10 years ago, hey? Oh, yeah. Mm. Now Beijing has about 20,000 attorneys in Beijing. 40% uh, of the amount is 40% of all Chinese lawyers, I think. Oh, oh, so well, that's right. because the government is uh, in Beijing, yeah? Uh, yeah. Lawyers have to be near the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, most of all the uh, foreign entities have their off um, head office located in Beijing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some big transaction, uh, they will hire Beijing law attorneys. Mm -hmm. So what's the name of your law firm? Uh, Jincheng and Tongda. Ah. Oh, no, <laughs> I think it's changed its name. Okay. Yeah, last year, 2006. Eight, we merged with uh, international legal group, uh -huh. so we changed the name Jincheng Tongda and the new. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. How many yeah. lawyers do you have? Uh, Two hundred and forty. Is that a very big firm in China, huh? Uh, yeah, big firm. Is it the biggest? Not the biggest. Okay. Mm -hmm. How big is the biggest? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how big? Is I think the biggest uh, has about. 400 attorney, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about an American lawyer? Can an American lawyer practice in your firm? Do you have American lawyers in your firm? Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, it will give 
give us some advice on Amer American law. They cannot use uh, Chinese law. So right. uh, when we have some foreign client, they will give them advice on the uh, tax strategy, cooperation and strategy about uh, U.S. law. Yeah, but it's very powerful if you have a Chinese lawyer and an mm -hmm. American lawyer working together. Yeah, we're working together. In the same firm for the same client. Uh -huh. you, can, you can really do important things that way, do global things that way. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. aside from the Americans, mm -hmm. do you represent other, uh, other, you know, the organizations and investors and mm -hmm. business groups from other countries? Uh, yeah, from Hong Kong. No, Hong Kong is not a foreign country. Well, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the same as China these yeah. days. <laughs> uh, UK and Australian, French. Japanese, Japan, Korea. We have a uh, we have a Korea group huh? about ten or t ten attorneys to partner. It's a group uh, help Korean clients. Just specializing in Korean clients. Uh -huh. Speak Korean. Speak Korean. Yeah. Ah, see, yeah. it's important to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so wh why did you go to law school? I mean, everybody in China uh, works so hard in school. Um, where did you decide, where, where along the way did you decide you wanted to be a lawyer? When I'm in college, my major is civil engineer. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, I take some law class um, at weekend. It's very interesting, like very excite, exciting. <laughs> so <laughs> when I graduate, I uh, got my bachelor degree of civil engineer and went to law school. Ah, uh, ah so... Take a one-year program, just one year. In law school. Yeah, and and I took the national bar examination, got my uh, lawyer license. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so interesting! After one year. Yeah. So if, if all I have to do is go to the law school for one year in China, um, but it must <laughs> be hard. Yeah, language is pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, so when you go to law school in China, mm -hmm. you're not only studying Chinese law; you're studying international law also. Uh, yeah, international law is a, is a cost. Uh, Zhang Yuzhang uh, went to a school uh, oh, in Europe. I think she was in London. Oh. And uh, she also was on the U.S. mainland. David Mao went to school in the Pacific uh -huh. Northwest. Oh. So all the Chinese lawyers are going to school everywhere now yeah? mm -hmm. for, law, for law programs. Yeah, yeah there are lots of law programs. Yeah, um, uh, Beijing Bar Association, Shanghai Bar Association, and the Chinese All Attorney Association each year, uh, and uh, even the law firm has some program yeah. encourages that young lawyers study abroad. Continuing uh, legal education. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, lots of young attorney want to educate themselves. Ah. Yeah. Do you go to those continuing classes now? Are you still in? <laughs> I mean, when you're back in Beijing, do you still go to classes? Maybe I will go back to my old firm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to be a lawyer. <laughs> so is this experience here in Honolulu, mm -hmm. you know, the exchange program, is this good for your career? Is this good for your resume that you have done this? Yeah, very, very good. Yeah. The experience is very special and uh, let me understand the different culture, different law uh, legal system, and uh, especially about the tax, uh, business tax, uh, oh, yeah. 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 So now you've also had a chance to see the community here in Hawaii. Yeah. People have taken you places and shown mm -hmm. you some of, the, some of the government things and the, and the uh, recreational things. Mm -hmm. So w what have you seen and what are, you, what are your impressions so far? The court procedure. Oh, really? What did yeah. you see? What did you see? Uh, I think the jury selection. I see all the procedure. Oh, I see. I think it's amazing. Lot, lots of people waiting at the courtroom, and the jury's procedure is so serious. And uh, a long time when uh, when the the whole morning is just to select jury. I can I cannot I I can't imagine it's happening in China. Do you think it's uh, inefficient? Uh, it's justice, but not efficient. Okay. <laughs> but Chinese people. Okay. Well, yeah. You're sure. It's a matter of your orientation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
So, uh, so uh, in China, mm -hmm. uh, how, do they have juries and? No, oh, no, no juries, jury. just it's, a judge. Yeah, it's different legal system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, did you ever think of becoming a uh, a criminal defense lawyer? Uh, I I'm not a cri I'm not practicing criminal law. How about litigation? How about civil litigation? Oh yeah, yeah, I do some litigation. Oh, you do? Yeah. You go to court? Yeah, go to court. Oh, so this is important that you see how an American court works. Yeah, yeah. I see all... Uh, uh, do you know uh, Mark Schaub? Sure, yes. Mark Schaub, yes. Yeah, it, it, uh, he's an initi initiator of this program. He uh, took a look around all types of court in Honolulu, federal court, uh, and a state court and bankruptcy court, yeah. And you got to meet some judges? Yeah, uh, Judge Border is very nice, explains the, the jury system uh, to me and uh, show me how the procedure progresses. So what do you think of American judges? Are they like Chinese judges? Uh, they're very nice. <laughs> 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 okay, maybe we leave it, it right it, there. <laughs> <laughs> it seems they, they have patience to explain something to you, but in China, judge is very serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how about, uh, how about the kind of litigation? What kind of litigation were you doing in China? Uh, okay, civil litigation. Mm -hmm. um, we help our client. Most of our clients are bank. Ah. Yeah, most of litigation is civil, civil litigation. So you but commercial disputes involving banks and other financial organizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That must be interesting. Do you like that work? Do you like going to court? Yes, I like some it. Some lawyers like it and some lawyers don't, you know. Oh, I like uh, go to court. It makes you excited. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. A challenge. <laughs> so tell me about what other, have you seen other government buildings or other government organizations here in Hawaii? In the state government building. And Mark showed me how to set up new business register how to apply oh, for online. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's very efficient. Yeah. And very only take, easy. Only takes a minute, yeah. Yeah, and very easy to 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 establish new business in Honolulu. It's not so easy in China. No, not so much easy. Yeah. yeah. And it, and because it's more complicated in China, it's more expensive in China. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes longer in China. Yeah. yeah. So do you think it will you think it will become uh, easier mm -hmm. in China as as time goes by? Is anybody making an effort to make it more streamlined? Uh, yeah, the government uh, uh, improve their efficiency, make people convenient. In China, can mm -hmm. you organize a business online? Can you go on the internet and make make a corporation or a joint venture or a woofie? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> if you want to uh, set up a joint venture or woofie, you have to get some permission from the government. Uh, it's um, it's complicated procedure. Mm, it takes a while. Uh -huh. yeah. So what else did he show you? Is, did he take you around to the legislature? Did he take you around to uh, any of the administrative buildings in the in the state government mm. or the city government? City okay. government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Uh, the city government looks very. It, it's open to public. Yeah. But in China, it's not open oh. to public. Maybe that'll change. Oh, in China, you can go to the building, but you cannot go into the ask them questions. Or something. Inside, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A little bit different. Well, sometimes you go and ask them a question here, and you may not get the answer you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you get to go? Do you get to go to the government buildings in Beijing? Do you, do you have business inside? Can you visit the, uh, the government officials? Theoretically, you can. But in reality, <laughs> if you go into a government official's office and ask them questions, I think they not uh, have some time to answer you. <laughs> okay, okay. okay interesting. But theoretically, you can. Okay. <laughs> so you left work on your desk in China. Yeah. Uh, so who's doing the work? Uh, our group has about uh, 40 lawyers. Oh, so oh, no, somebody. 20 lawyers. 20, in our group. okay. Uh -huh. Somebody is doing it. Yeah. So when you so you can leave and it's okay, somebody else will yeah, yeah, step yeah. in. Yeah. Is it very competitive in your law firm? Uh, yeah, I think so. So you have to work hard. Work hard. Yeah. Yeah, I think in Honolulu, in, in case study, yeah, uh, the at 
five o'clock or six o'clock. Yeah, and then everybody go gone. <laughs> but in our law firm in Beijing, we can go home at seven or eight o'clock. Oh. <laughs> so Hawaii is very nice. <laughs> No, yeah. that's, that's one of our special uh, attributes. <laughs> so what time do you start in the, a law firm in Beijing? Uh, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. And how about Saturdays? Do you work Saturdays? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Not every weekend. Not, no, not every okay. weekend. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. So do, do you have any travel in China, you know, as part of practicing law? Do you mm -hmm. get to see Western China? Do you get to see uh, Xi'an or... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. We have five uh, offices. Ah, oh, you're all over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Shanghai, Shenzhen, Shenyang, Xi'an. In Xi'an? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. You know Xi'an? I, I was there a couple of times. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> so you went to see the, uh, the, the soldiers, the clay mm -hmm. soldiers uh -huh. there, yeah. yeah. So do you go around? Do you go from city to city, or do you stay only in Beijing? I'll go around. Ah, uh -huh. so different cases. A different case, yeah. Help our client in different city. Ah, yeah. so you, you may meet a client in one city or another city. It's all the same. Mm, um, yeah. And, and, and you can go to a court in every city. Do you have to be admitted specially for that city, or can you practice in all cities in the courts? Uh, we, we can practice in all cities, because China, the light, uh, Attorney license just to it, it just a one license national license. It's different from America. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we're, we're getting American there. attorney should take state bar examination. Yeah. Just practice in one state. Yeah. Yeah. We can practice in all China. It's an interesting. My brother, who is a lawyer, uh -huh. teaching now in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, your school, David. Um, uh, he, he's admitted in a number of cities mm -hmm. around Washington, D.C., in other states around Washington, D.C., uh -huh. but now he's in an area which is, he's not admitted in, so he went to take the multi-state exam. Uh -huh. The multi-state exam lets him practice in New England now, but he's been admitted since mm, 1968. Uh -huh. So after all these years, what is it, 40 years plus, he has to take another bar exam. Wow. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how is the bar exam in China? Is it hard? Uh, it's, yeah, I think it's pretty hard. Yeah. I take the examination 2002. Uh, it's yeah. the first national bar examination. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. The pass rate is 7%. 7? Seven? Yeah, it's pretty hard. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> yeah, just a 7%. So, Dong Mei, you passed the first time? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I work very hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, how, much time do you, how much time do you have to study for it? Uh, I study about um, three months. Ah. Yeah. Takes a bar examination class. Very helpful. Night and day. Oh, sure. The, the cram course, they call it in the U.S. Oh, yeah, cram yeah. course, yeah. Uh -huh. So you study night and day because it's important to pass. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, almost... Uh, 12 hours a day. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> including Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what happens, uh, mm -hmm. do you, if, you, if you don't pass the bar exam, and mm -hmm. this very competitive bar exam, mm -hmm. it means you can't get a job until you do pass the bar exam? Uh, yeah, you, no, no, you can't get a job. You can be a uh, paralegal. Ah, ah, Secretary. just can't actually, you're not licensed yet. Yeah, so. you know in China the judge, uh, Prosecutor and uh, uh, attorney, uh, the, the examination is the same. So if, if if you don't pass the bar examination, you you cannot be attorney, a judge, or prosecutor. Uh, yeah. But if you do pass, you can be all three. Uh yes. So how do I get to be a judge? Not that I'm thinking <laughs> of this right now, but how uh, do I get to be a judge in China? Oh, uh, it's. Uh, you should pass the bar examination and pass the, I think it's a national official examination. So it's a, a second examination? Yeah. And then you can be a judge. So, Dong Mei, do you ever think about becoming a judge? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's very well respected, isn't it? Uh, yes, mm, respected. Yeah. But uh, it, it's very interesting. In China, the judge is very young. I think in America, the judge is very, uh, not so young. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah. 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 Some of my classmates are judge. Uh, they, 
they can hear in divorce cases, even they don't, uh, they don't marry. So it's <laughs> right. How can you understand a divorce if you've never been married, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes our clients ask the judge, "How do you judge this <laughs> uh, divorce case? You don't marry?" It's yeah, right. <laughs> a good question. Yeah. <laughs> and the judge in China judge very busy, uh, especially in Beijing and Shanghai. So many cases. Sometimes it work at Saturday and at night. Ooh. Oh, Night yeah. court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to ask you about technology. Everybody knows that China is into technology. Uh -huh. And um, technology everywhere, all kinds of technology. Everybody's studying engineering just like you. Yeah. Uh -huh. So lots of technology. So yeah. how does the technology affect your practice of law in Beijing? Is the firm a, a high-tech firm? How? Uh, I think big law firm has intellectual property department. Our law firm, th this department in our law firm has about 20 attorneys. And uh, when we uh, hire an attorney for this department, we, we hope they have some engineering background. Uh -huh. Like you? Uh, but I'm, I'm not in this But department. if you wanted to be an IP attorney, intellectual mm -hmm. property attorney, you could be an intellectual property attorney. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe some other time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. How about the uh, equipment in the firm? Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, computers on the attorney's desks, and do you have networks and wireless mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Microsoft software? What do you have? So very similar to case study, all the equipment. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, even the software, even the time manager software, yes. I think it's the same. The billing, the billing software. Yeah. Where you where you write your time down. Yeah, time time sheet, write down time sheet, and mm -hmm. I think it's very similar. The, yeah, the, interesting. Yeah. So you you, it's not that uh, you have to ca catch up. Maybe we have to catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> so when you write your time down and mm -hmm. the firm bills your time, mm -hmm. can you tell me how much they bill in in dollars? For China clients, uh, in IMB. Uh, I'm being, yeah. yeah, foreigner, uh, dollar. Well, mm. give me both. <laughs> <laughs> how how uh, much was it? Uh, for foreign clients, uh, two hundred or three hundred uh, dollars. American an hour. dollars. Yeah. Uh -huh, an hour. Yeah. And and uh, in yuan? Yuan is uh, most of client. We just we, we don't we don't charge them on on time. Oh. It's, yeah, it's contract. Oh, interesting. So you have yeah. a fixed price. A fixed price, yeah. So you, they say what they want. They say you, they want you to form a business entity, so you give them a fixed price. And uh, yeah, for project transaction yeah. Yeah. cases, it's yeah. fixed price. And for litigation, it's contingent. Commercial litigation is contingent. Yes. So you're careful what cases you take. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost all litigation are contingent. Uh -huh. Maybe that's a good idea there. Uh -huh. So do you make the decisions mm -hmm. about what cases to take? If, if I call you mm -hmm. and I say, Dong Mei, I'd like you to represent me uh -huh. in a case, can you make that decision? Can you bring that work into the firm? Yeah. Ah, okay. You can say yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Jay, I'll represent you. <laughs> <laughs> it's pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I may call you sometime. <laughs> Hope so. So do you, do you notice an increasing number of, um, of American clients coming to the firm? Uh, is the American presence, the American business presence, greater now than it was mm -hmm. two or three years ago? Yeah. That is why so many young attorneys study in America. Sure. Yeah, we have more ready. and more American clients. Well, I want to go to China again. I've been to China a couple, three times, and I want to see because I think Mm -hmm. If you if you stay away from China for more than a year, you you have to catch up, because everything moves so quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Beijing is a big city. Uh, three months is you cannot. Uh, you, you will think it's a new big city. What about yeah. Shanghai? Have you have you spent much time in Shanghai? Uh, not so much time. Would you like to? I like Beijing more. <laughs> really interesting. <laughs> the culture is different. Well, tell me how it's different. Uh, Wow, <laughs> I think Shanghai is a commercial city. Beijing is a traditional, more traditional, and uh, uh, people, the relationship between people are more close. That's interesting. Yeah. That really means a lot. 
Uh -huh. Does it mean a lot to you? Do you like to have a mm -hmm. culture like that? You prefer that culture to the Shanghai business go-go culture? <laughs> <laughs> I like the culture in Beijing. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But Beijing is older. There's not as much new construction. There's uh -huh. not as much new money going into infrastructure. I, w I stayed in Pudong, you know, Pudong, Shanghai, yeah, yeah. Oh, some hotels there. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're fabulous. Like, you couldn't find it anywhere in the world like hotels there. Um, actually, in Beijing, you can. It's the same to Shanghai, I think. China World. You know mm -hmm. China World? Mm hmm Big hotel. Oh, our office, uh, our law firm at that building. Really? In China World? <laughs> oh, I <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess it's a nice building. Yeah. <laughs> so China you get building. out and take take trips to other countries. Uh, have you traveled to Seoul? Uh, have you traveled to Hong Kong? Have you traveled to Japan? Have you been around? No, I just uh, traveled to Singapore. We ah. have a client there. Of course, and do some business for business, there. yeah. Yeah, for business. And Malaysia? Have you been to Malaysia? No. no. <laughs> so what do you think of Singapore compared to uh, Beijing? Um, different, very different. Eh? Yeah, very different. Singapore is it's something like Honolulu. Huh. It's, uh, it's a mixture of Western and uh, no, Western and Eastern culture. Uh, so do you like it? I mean, would you would you go back there? Would you spend more time there? It's very hot. The weather. Yes, that's true. And yeah. humid. <laughs> and humid. Yeah, yeah. But the restaurants are good. Yeah, yeah. I went oh, to the Hutong yeah. in Beijing. <laughs> you like it? I loved it. Yeah, And me the too. restaurants in the Hutong were fabulous. Oh uh, yeah, know? yeah. The old restaurants, you know, hundreds of years old. Yeah, maybe s next time when you come to Beijing, I, I will, sh I will take you look around. I'll, I'll call you for sure. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, the uh, Forbidden City itself is a fabulous place. Yeah, I have been to the Forbidden City more than ten times. <laughs> <laughs> when I have friend visit me, I take sure. them to the Forbidden City. Each time, I'm very excited. Yeah. Why? Is it the culture? Is it the history? Uh -huh. Or is it the, um, the, you know, the artwork? What do you like? Yeah, the, the, the artwork, the building, the architecture. Oh, it's amazing. It is amazing. It's mm -hmm. a splendid place. Yeah. And to walk around outside, too, is very pretty, you know, outside mm -hmm. the walls. American-China relations. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you follow that? Do people in China follow that? Um, you know about exactly what's happening, what Obama is saying, and what Hu Jintao is saying, and 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 uh, you know how those countries are interacting diplomatically, mm -hmm. and wh what it looks like in terms of the development of their relationship going forward. What do you think? I mean, I, we feel so close to the Chinese, we really do. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. So how do the Chinese feel about the U.S.? I mean, the person on the street, the person in the law firm, uh -huh. what do they think about the U.S.? Very close to U.S. I think when I'm very young, I look the U.S. film, and uh, it, you know when when child in school, uh, teacher uh, will teach them uh, the accent is American English. It's not English. Mm. Uh, right, American accent. English is better. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very a very close. How do you think that the relationship mm -hmm. between the, the U.S. and China will go? From a business point of view, from a popular point of view, uh, what is it going to look like in five years or ten years? I mean, from the point of view of your firm, from the point of view of, well, everything, uh, what's it going to be like? I, I looked at the news yesterday about Obama to China. I think the new relationship is better for, all, for, for China and America. It's built more closer and cooperate. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you worry about the American economy? I mean, we've had some troubles in the past year, mm -hmm. and so has Europe, of course. Um, but China has done pretty well. Do you worry that if the American economy suffers, that ultimately China will suffer? Yeah, it's a very uh, big influence uh, to China's economy. You know, in Zhujiang, uh, Zhujiang San Jiaozhou is uh, southern China. Um, about 40 percent the manufacture they closed just because the American uh, economic is not good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Heard that. Because yeah. most of their products export to America. Yeah, um, manufacturing is so important. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the U.S. is manufacturing much at all. I read recently that uh, China, big wind company, big wind company, big wind, they manufacture turbines in uh, mm -hmm. near Beijing, I think, uh -huh. and uh, they're doing a joint venture in Texas uh -huh. for 600 megawatts. Huge. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you doing any energy projects? Are you representing clients who are doing renewable energy, wind or solar? I think our firm has clients, but our group now. Ah, sure. You're yeah. in finance. <laughs> <laughs> you finance all the other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you do financing, are you dealing with banks or are you dealing with uh, government funding or are you dealing with uh, private funding offshore or all of them? Most of the clients are national national-owned bank. Ch China national-owned yes, bank. Yes, yes, and <laughs> some local commercial bank, uh, for example, Beijing Bank, uh, and uh, yeah, most of so, the And you bank. do, you do uh, financing deals financing when they make deals. loans and... Yeah, draft a contract and give some legal advice about control the risk uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, litigation for, for them. When, they, when somebody doesn't pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. tell me, how, how will the track of your career go? How will your career as a uh, Chinese lawyer go forward? Will you stay with the firm? Are you likely to mm. move at some point? Are you going to be a partner? Yeah, I think most attorneys want to be a partner after seven years. And uh, uh, some attorney will uh, we'll go to corporation in-house counsel, and uh, some of them will go to government official to be a government official. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What would you do? Uh, I will still be a lawyer attorney. You, you stay right there. Yeah. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's, but it's it, in in the U.S. The best thing a lawyer can do is be a lawyer. That's a lot of people feel that way. Do they feel the same way in China? Most Chinese attorney have no time to think about this question. Because, ah, okay. <laughs> you know, when I'm in case, uh, Roger introduced a um, partner to me. It's, it, it have 40 years experience. Uh, but in China, the, the most senior law lawyer just uh, 20 years experience. The most think, senior lawyer? Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, because it hasn't existed that long. Yeah. These law firms are all relatively new. Yeah, our law firm set up uh, set up in uh, nineteen ninety two. I think it's the oldest law firm, private law firm in China. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, uh, my boss is uh, forty five or forty six years old. He's the oldest lawyer. Senior. In China. Se oh. Most the senior. So. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I met Richard Chu. I told you Richard Chu is with David Mao in oh, the Pioneer Law Group. Richard Chu is, he's older than 45. Oh. And he was uh, very, he was uh, practiced very early, oh. even uh, I think before the Cultural Revolution, way back. But I guess there are not many very senior lawyers in China because the whole legal industry is not that old. Yeah. So what about the rule of law? You know, they talk about the rule of law. You, you talk about that, about establishing laws and regulations uh -huh. that people will abide by, where everybody can predict what's going to happen and try to get people to follow the rules. For example, in intellectual property, uh -huh. you know, to avoid piracy of intellectual property. What's the discussion? Uh, yeah, people, it's very easy to know the rule of law uh, from the Internet and the government. Uh, encourage people to know the new law and follow the new law. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's more easier for Chinese people to know the, the new regulation than American people. Uh, but suppose you find a regulation that uh -huh. you think is wrong, mm -hmm. that this is not a good regulation. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Oh, well, that's a big problem. Attorney, may, maybe they will discuss this problem. <laughs> And, uh, you, you know, in Bar Association, uh, Beijing Bar Association, Shanghai Bar Association, they have some uh, department group. And uh, the attorney will uh, tell this group, tell, tell this department what they are thinking and uh, give some, uh, give the advice to government. And uh, government will, I think, will consider this advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's actually a, 
a way uh, that you can speak to government and tell them to reconsider. Yeah. So yeah. you send them a letter, is that what happens? If you send the letter to government, the government must give you answer. We could use that rule right here in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my boss is a delegation of uh, Beijing con Congress and uh, Congress, yeah. Congress, yeah. So w when uh, a government receives some letter from people, sometimes they will uh, ask our law firm give some advice. They, according to the law, the government must answer the question. This is a great rule. Yeah. This is yeah. really important. That's yeah. that's a terrific and, rule. And uh, and uh, so lots of problem question. What okay, about so the one child policy? Mm -hmm. You know, they say that you have to have a growing population uh, to have a good economy and that you can't stop the, you know, the level of fertility. You have to keep growing. And so the one child policy actually stopped the level of population, the growth of the population for a while because two people have only one child uh -huh. that leaves the next generation with one child when the previous generation was two children. Uh -huh. Okay, so what's what's happening in the one child policy now? Yeah, it's still the uh, one child policy. Still, still the policy. Yeah, still the policy. If the child from a family just have one child and uh, and her husband from a family just one child, they, ha they can have two babies. Oh, it's interesting. It's a new policy. New policy. Yeah. So they're opening it up a little bit now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember I went to a, a program once, and uh, there were a lot of Chinese uh, students. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they were they were more than, they were journalists, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And um, so the speaker said, uh, "Is there anybody here who has a brother or sister?" Mm -hmm. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All these people, and yeah. nobody raised his hand because there were no brothers or uh -huh. sisters. <laughs> uh, when they married, they can have two baby. Ah. Yeah. Oh, that's really different now. Yeah, because they're from. Uh, uh, they're from a family, just one baby. Ah, so do you have a brother or sister? I have a brother. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so I, I will have just the one too. <laughs> so has your family always lived in uh, in Beijing? Oh, uh, no. My family live in Anhui province. Where is that? Uh, southern western China. Oh, south. It's a long way from Beijing. Uh, yeah. About 10 hours when I take train. Wow. Oh. Mm-hmm. But it's not that, I mean, it's, it's not hard to travel now in China. You, uh, in Spring Festival, it's pretty hard. Yeah. How about Chinese New Year? Yeah, yeah. It's a Spring Festival with Chinese oh, New same Year. Oh, okay. same thing. Okay. In yeah. January. <laughs> yeah. We should book the ticket one month or two months earlier. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, is Feli still there? Yes. Oh, so mm. when you went to school, high school and all that, you were going there, mm. not in Beijing. You grew up in the south of China? Uh, yes. Yes, and then you came to Beijing yeah. later for school? Yeah, and work. And work. Uh -huh. Also, but you have to get to see them once in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how do you go, by train? Mm. But you fly. By train. By train. Yeah, my, my parents live in a small city, no airport. No, ah, <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah. So it is, is it a, is it a, do they like being there? Is this, uh, mm -hmm. is this a place they originally selected or were they, were they, did the government ask them to be there? It's like uh, government asks them to live there. Uh -huh. and, but now they could move. Yeah, they can move. But maybe they like it because... Maybe someday they will move to Beijing and live with me. <laughs> yeah, maybe someday. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my parents is work in a state-owned company all their life. <laughs> ah, so that explains, yeah. yeah. Are they still working? No, retired. Now retired. Yeah. What's retirement like in China these days? I mean, someday you'll be retired too. Uh -huh. What's it like? Does the, does the government take care of you? Oh, uh, yeah. Government, you can, uh, the government, uh, you know, uh, about 10 years ago, I think, my parents retired. They, the the state-owned company take care of you, but now the, the country take care of you. They yeah. reform. Is reformed. So, so the state takes care of you now, yeah, because there's yeah. not a, a lot of the state-owned companies are gone. Yeah. Yeah. So they can't take care of anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a, a big change. Big change. Yeah. Big change. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be an initiative to uh, 
you know, to build, for the Chinese to build factories mm -hmm. overseas. Mm -hmm. I know they build factories in uh, oh, many places, including the U.S. and mm -hmm. South America and all, all, th all west of China, too. Mm -hmm. um, do you do any work on those factories? I guess they're joint ventures. Mm -hmm. With uh, other other big companies, a Chinese oh. company goes overseas uh -huh. to build something. I mean, in, in oh yeah, yeah, it's very common. Yeah. So, Nowadays. are you representing them? Are you representing the yes. the Chinese part of, of that company? Yes, we have clients investing in Africa for the uh, infrastructure, uh, cooperate with Africa uh, government and local company. Ah. <laughs> More and more now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, is this a desirable career track for somebody to be a, a manager, or say, of a Chinese manufacturing company in Africa? Is that something I would want to do? Is that something that pays well? Is that something that's good for my career? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, the go out policy has very big influence to stay on company. What did you call it? The go out policy? Go out policy. Go out policy. Is yeah. that like the stand up policy? Uh, no, 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 different. Different, okay. Yeah, it's encouraging uh, China people invest abroad. So I think under that policy, that is why so many, uh, so many Chinese company invest in America, Africa, and some. Uh -huh. So what's, is there an, an incentive is there a tax incentive or mm -hmm. some business incentive that the Chinese government gives to the go-out policy to yeah. encourage them to uh, form organizations overseas? Uh, yeah, some policy uh, is currency, new currency policy. Uh, we can keep some uh, income abroad. Oh, I see. Yes, I, I see. Right. Yeah. Because in the old days, you couldn't. Yes. You had to send everything back. Yes. You couldn't keep any money outside the uh, country. That's a big change. So now you can make, you can keep it local, mm -hmm. and then there's, and you can do things with it, and you can build the company better yeah. that way. And it's new law. New law. So uh -huh. and that's very attractive to people. Yes. Because it means they can make a buck. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So what is your advice to Hawaii? I know you have a couple of months left, uh -huh. you know, in your stay here, and you're still going around to see things. And I know I'll see you, and I'll go around with you too. Uh -huh. But I'm wondering if you formed any advice about what Hawaii should do. What Hawaii should do for its economy, uh -huh. for its education, for its involvement in technology. Uh -huh. uh, what can Hawaii learn from China? What do you recommend? Oh, this question. I recommend Hawaii do more things. Um, education, tourism. Yeah, you, you know, it has to Last year, each year, I think from then on, uh, China government official go study abroad each year. Uh, some of them, uh, for example, last year, uh, Zhejiang Province government and uh, um, Dalian city and Inner Mongolia, they sent some uh, official study America. Hawaii is a big city to provide these services. Uh, it can merge the Asian people and Western people. Uh, the, the, the government official want to learn some uh, Western culture and uh, management skill. So I think Hawaii maybe can, can international center in some of, uh, on, on this point. So we would we would uh, have have courses and classes and programs yes. to teach the Chinese businessmen, the Chinese Chinese officials, businessmen, uh, businessmen, and attract uh, some business uh, government officials stay in Hawaii. Yes, and teach yeah. them classes because it's a big market. Yes, <laughs> well, the Chinese people always like to be in school, don't they? <laughs> yeah, you know, the <laughs> government official they study one year. Uh -huh. Okay, well, sure, to, to, for the job, yeah. For the, yeah, for yeah. the job, yeah. So, okay, <laughs> that's, that's good advice. And um, another advice. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I think um, more, uh, uh, more and more Chinese people want to invest uh, in Hawaii by real estate. It's the weather, the nice people are nice. Mm -hmm. So give them, give them some... Uh, Friendship policy, 
check those. Make it easy for them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the average Chinese investor or tourist or um, student, if you will, uh, oh. uh, speaks English, right? So mm -hmm. how important is it that we learn Mandarin? Oh, Mandarin. If we want to do business in China, uh, speaking English is uh, it's good, but if you know Mandarin, it will uh, make you comfortable and uh, more convenient. Helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Any other advice? How about advice for our own educational system? Uh -huh. You read in the paper that we, we've had furloughs of our teachers uh -huh. and we don't, uh, we, we're not giving them but 130 hours, um, you know, of education. It's not that much. Mm -hmm. um, what do you recommend that we do to make everybody um, a structural engineer? You can learn some Chinese when they're young, like, like Chinese people uh, learn English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody in China speaks English. Huh? Yeah, I know Punho School has a program. Chinese it does. Program. It's a very good program. Yeah. Some people say it's good, as good or better than the University of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -oh. they have a very good program. Yeah. So all the high schools should have a program like that. Yeah. Mm. We study Chinese children study English from very young when they are six or seven years old. Mm. So tell me, uh, what what else would you like to say? Mm -hmm. uh, to the people who would be interested in how your time has been, you know, about how your participation in the exchange program has been. What would you say to them? What would you like them to remember? Uh -huh. I, I think I'll suggest something to you. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. so the, um, the program should be two ways. Uh -huh. So uh, Zhang Yuzang came here last year, uh -huh. and now Yu Dong Mei comes, you know, in uh, 2009. But what about having somebody go to China in this program? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. How would it work? I mean, uh, mm. what would that person do? Uh, how much? Uh, let's assume that person did not speak Mandarin. Mm -hmm. What? How would it work? How do you think it should work? Uh, yes. We have uh, our law firm has international department, and some of our client from America, and uh, the attorney. Uh, into our law firm can help them. Yeah. So they could be at your law firm. Yeah, and give uh, give advice to the foreign client on the American law. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to yeah. find somebody who will come over. Oh, and say hi. maybe uh, Connie do want to come. Yeah, she does. Yeah, I know we'll that. Yeah. Her. Yeah, and she speaks Mandarin, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. So, yeah. anybody else have questions, David? You have any questions? I guess one of the questions I had is. Your, um, do people like you in China watch programs like this on the internet? And if not, what would make it uh, interesting for people in China, professionals uh, and so forth, to go to the internet to, to listen to Jay interview interesting people like yourself and other leaders? Uh, yeah, we, we, we look the video on internet. Uh, very common. Have, did, have you ever seen Jay's show, Think Tech, Hawaii? Uh, no, not yet. Yes. I will. I'll show it to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, I've heard that the internet in China, a lot of people get all their news from the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so instead of reading a newspaper, the newspaper is okay, but the internet is where the, the real news is. Is that true? Is that is it, people look at the internet and they get they look at the blogs mm -hmm. and <laughs> they want to find out all the all the scoop, you know, about what's going on. You find things on the internet you would not see in the press, you would right. not see on television. Yeah, I I look news uh, videos internet every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Do you think there's a chance you'll come back here soon, after your trip? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you come back professionally, or would you come back as a, as a, a tourist? Uh, come back a tourist. Well, I hope you come back soon, Dong Mei. Yeah. So I think we'll all look forward to seeing you and all your friends. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Aloha. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. 谢谢再见。不客气。不客气。